You probably clicked on this video because you're not from Des Moines and you want someone to explain to you the different suburbs, area, drive time, thought process of the Des Moines Metro. And that's what this video is going to be. Hey, my name is Darson Grantham. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams. And in this, on this channel in general, I go through everything that you need to know about living in Des Moines, Iowa, in the Des Moines Metro, whether it's a suburb, Ankeny, Waukee, Norwalk, Altoona, or if it's Des Moines proper. And on this video, I'm gonna go through what I'm on the map, where, where each pocket is. And I'm gonna kind of guide you along so that you know when I'm talking about different segments, su um, different suburbs, you know kind of the drive time to downtown or some of the big corporate where the industrial might be that you can't really you can't see unless you're in town but what i'm going to do is virtually on a map show you where that's at also the restaurants where common restaurants are that people like to go to maybe nightlife parks recs anything like that big event venues things that you need to think about when you're purchasing a property to live in the des moines metro so let's dig in So here we have a map of the Des Moines Metro. And so as you can see, my pointer finger up here is north of Ankeny, right? So we'll zoom out just a little bit more. And we have Ankeny here, we have Waukee, we have Norwalk, we have Altoona. Those are kind of the three big, bigger suburbs of Des Moines, Iowa. And if you uh, scroll out just a little bit further, you have Ames up here. So if you ever talk about um, the Metro and you wanna think about Ames, Ames is, is, it's honestly a different housing, like completely different housing market than the Des Moines Metro is. I personally don't do any business up there, but if you're looking to purchase in Ames or I guess anywhere throughout the state, let me know. We have a network of, of realtors that we can connect you with that I feel you'll be in good hands if you're working with them. But we're gonna talk about the Des Moines Metro. So we have those, those kind of key suburbs. Those are the big suburbs. And those are the suburbs that I've already done a video on. And so I'm gonna link those videos in uh, right now so that if you wanna see any of those specific suburbs and the, our vlog tour of them, you're able to um, jump on and, and do that right now. We'll just start out kind of downtown Des Moines. Da Des Moines in general is 700, like the Metro is about 750,000 people. And if you're gonna, if you're thinking about Des Moines Metro, um, you're gonna see, you're gonna see neighborhoods on here and these aren't towns, right? So this is Beaverdale. This is um, an area, a neighborhood, if you will. Just like if we go over here and we go to Southwestern Hills, that's an area, a neighborhood. It's definitely not a town. So you're never gonna see like Southwestern Hills, Des Moines, Iowa. Like that's not gonna come up to play. So keep in mind when we see those things on the map, that's not a town, it's definitely just an area. Now the towns are gonna be your bold here. So West Des Moines, Windsor Heights, Des Moines, and you have Urbandale. I don't know why Lovington, I would not consider that a town, although you they might be kind of considered that. When you're working downtown, you're working in this little quadrant right here. And it's about 11, 12, 13 blocks. And it kind of goes diagonal, actually doesn't go east-west. Um, the main road here would be MLK, turns into Fleur. So MLK off your 235. Actually, I'll just back that up just a little bit more. Bigger picture, Des Moines has two main interstates and then um, a, a freeway, right? So your interstate is I-80 right here. And then it cuts up, goes right here, follows 35, right here goes through the city so i-80 goes across the united states so keep that in mind 35 goes north and south across the united states and they both intersect in des moines which is probably why des moines is a city in general just because it has very very large interstates big interstates going dissecting the city so 35 coming up from north to south it, 35 and 80 connect right there and it goes up through here so if you're ever close if you're living close to 35 or 80 the, your ability to get anywhere throughout the metro is going to significantly decrease. So your commute time is going to decrease if you live close to those highways. The, excuse me, close to those uh, interstates. If you live close to the freeway, freeway is 235. Free, freeway, you're not going to see as many semis on the freeway unless they're traveling, um, traveling downtown, right? So typically, trucks that are going through the city are going to go through 80 and they're going to follow 80 out. They're not going to go through 235 unless they have it somewhere on this route that they need to go. So your traffic uh, on 235 is usually gonna be more, it's, it's gonna be a little bit better than what your traffic on 8035 is, uh, just depending on the part of the day, but that's gonna be most common. But when you are traveling, commuting to downtown Des Moines and you're living out west, maybe in West Des Moines, and you're driving into the city, 
about that seven o'clock to nine o'clock time frame, it's you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of traffic. Um, so more specifically, downtown, your larger principal uh, financial um, insurance industries are gonna be right here um, around the seventh, eighth, and Grand Avenue and Locust. So Des Moines does have some one, quite a few one way streets downtown. So when you are driving downtown, pay attention because you don't want to drive down the wrong, the one way street. Although I've seen it done many, many times, you, you don't want to do that clearly. The one really cool attraction that is close to downtown that a lot of people really don't take advantage of, and I do because we live really close to it, is Gray's Lake. And Gray's Lake is not big enough. There's no there's no power motors on or power boats on it. There's no tubing on it, but it's a great place to fish, a great walking trail around it. We take the family across it um, quite often, probably weekly, if not maybe a little bit more. There's a little playground right here. There's a beach that you can sit on. Actually, there's a gazebo thing right here where you can rent boats and the city um, the city owns that lake. And so the city manages it, keep it very, very nice. Um, and something new this year is over here, uh, Waterworks Park. And one of the cool things they built was um, the Lordison Amphitheater. So this was just finished this year, maybe last year, 2020 during COVID, but it didn't have any concerts. And this amphitheater is gonna be just incredible because it can hold pretty darn big venues. And there really hadn't been anywhere in Des Moines proper that could hold venues of like a, a big country concert where you have you know a couple stages and just uh, thousands and thousands of people, not outdoors anyway. Um, speaking of that, uh, if concerts venue now that's on the, the talk is part of your arsenal or you wanna make sure that you know where those are at in Des Moines, there is the Wells Fargo Arena, which is going to be right here in the, in the city. And so right off of 235, there's an exit on 2nd or 3rd Avenue. And Wells Fargo Arena is going to host the biggest concert in the city. Um, it is a very, very large arena. It's not the Wells Fargo corporate headquarters. It is an arena where they're going to have most concerts. That's where your um, Iowa Wild hockey team is going to play. That's where um, kind of on that same... The one interesting thing about that area is there's not very much, there's not very many restaurants right there. You'd think with a big convention center like that, there'd be a handful of restaurants, but really the only restaurant is up there is that's when you aren't walking seven or eight blocks is this Buzzard Billy's, which is really good. Don't get me wrong. But if you're planning to go to Wells Fargo for an event and you want something to eat, that Buzzard Billy's is going to be packed because there's nowhere else to go that's close. So backing it up just a little bit. Um, Downtown, your eating districts, uh, you're going to, I say districts, it's kind of a couple streets. You have quite a few food joints on um, Locust, traveling from the uh, west to the east. You have Americana, it's very good. That's funny. There's a couple of these restaurants that aren't on here, and they totally, there we go, Shentro. Uh, there we go. This is the one I was looking for which is right there on that road that I was talking about, but it wasn't showing up and it was confusing me. Okay, so if you're want the if you looking for the where you go out uh, Friday, Saturday night, the bars district is gonna be your court, ave, and third. So right here is gonna be where all of the bar scene is for downtown if you wanna, if you wanna see where, you know, the Iowa nightlife, it's right here. The cool thing about that is the city of Des Moines actually has an ongoing live feed of that intersection, a camera. So if you ever are curious what the nightlife looks like, you're actually able to log in and look at that. Something that's pretty attractive for downtown is the uh, East Village. And it's getting just getting more and more and more business, uh, more bars, more restaurants. And you really, um, you're not gonna, you're gonna find tons of good food, tons of good alcohol, beverages, experiences in this little district right here between Grand Ave, Court Ave, and um, just, just east of the river, Des Moines River, and right around East 7th. So that's kind of this, this little pocket right here. You're going to have lots of lots of options to eat, lots of options to live. If you wanted to live, live in an apartment, uh, buy a condo, any of those are options right there. I didn't really touch on apartment living downtown. There are apartments spread throughout, condos spread throughout, and it's actually starting to extend um, further than downtown, kind of out into the uh, areas that haven't had much growth, like down here, they're building a bunch of new apartment complexes and we're looking at kind of, it's called Cityville. There's a lot of new apartments going in right here. Something really cool about that is when you live right here, you have downtown there and then you have Gray's Lake here and they just built a bridge over Gray's Lake right here, which is really cool. 
So that's kind of the downtown. Um, again, if you are, here's the airport where it's, you know, compared to downtown, it's probably a 10, 15 minute drive, depending on um, what the traffic is like. And your main road to get downtown when you're at the airport is this Fleur Drive. So um, there is always construction on Fleur Drive. So keep that in mind. A lot of times it's uh, one lane. So it's it's two, hot, two lanes each side, but typically one of the lanes is shut down. So the other thing to think about is if you're living in your Altoona area, so up here, in order to get to your um, Jordan Creek Parkway, which would be, excuse me, they say Jordan Creek, with, if you're trying to get to Jordan Creek Town Center, you're trying to get here, right? So the drive is gonna be most likely either you're gonna take, you're going from here to here or here to here, and that's literally completely across the city. So that's why Altoona really has spent a lot of time developing their strip center um, and outlet mall and nightlife and, and bar scene. It's it's actually really, really impressive. Um, they've got the Prairie Meadows Casino right there. And so if you're living out in Altoona, there really isn't a huge need to go to Jordan Creek. There's a few, I'm sure there's a few restaurants that people like to go to uh, that you, when you live in Altoona, you're, you're driving over to Jordan Creek. But reality, you're probably not living in Altoona and driving out to Jordan Creek a whole lot. One thing you would probably do is you, it's, it'd be very common for you to drive downtown, whether it's the farmer's market or it's restaurants. That's something that is, is very likely somewhere you're going to drive quite a bit. Um, and it's, you know, quick little 20, 15, 20 minute drive. It's really not too bad. So other things that I want to touch on of just when you're looking at the city in general, we have Sailorville Lake up here and we don't, I, I'd call it something that Des Moines isn't talked about a whole lot to have a lake this close, but it is, uh, it is a place you can dock your boat. There's no houses on Sailorville, almost none, I guess. Um, but there is an, a marina and there are houseboats on the, on the, on the lake. So you would be able to uh, pontoon, you'd be able to ski, water ski, all that good stuff. So that is a quick getaway. Uh, obviously, if you're living in any of the suburbs, um, a drive up to Sailorville Lake isn't going to be more than 25 to 30 minutes, depending on where you live. Norwalk would probably be the furthest, but because it has quick access to Highway 5, which connects to 835, and you can go, just go up this way, uh, I'd say the, the drive time is probably 25 minutes. If you want to extend it just a little bit, some folks, when they look at Des Moines there, um, maybe looking at somewhere they want to get maybe a little bit smaller town. Indianola would be something to look at. Still a pretty good sized town, has college, industry, business. And um, and it's about 30 minutes from downtown, 35 minutes from downtown. Obviously, if you're going to Ankeny from Indianola, that's going to be a pretty, pretty long drive. Just like if I said you're going to go from Ames and you want to go from Ames to Indianola or Norwalk, that's a pretty good drive. Uh, Ames to North Ankeny is about 20 minutes, which seems crazy, but you have basically this Interstate 35 straight shot you to go 80, 75, 80 the whole way. And um, a lot of people that live in North Ankeny will work in Ames. Or if you live in Ames, you go work in North Ankeny. We'll dig in just a little bit deeper on Ankeny just because we're in here talking about it. Um, a couple areas of Ankeny that are fascinating to me, and that would be this little area right here, which is a little north of Sailorville. Prairie Trail is a very popular, um, very popular place. A lot of restaurants, a lot of food, a lot of housing is, is right there. Um, and the interesting thing about Prairie Trail is if you're driving downtown from Prairie Trail area, because you it takes so long to get to 35, this little drive right here, which you wouldn't think would take very long from Prairie Trail right here, you wouldn't think this drive right here would take very long, but this little drive right here on almost any part of the day will take just as long or longer than your drive from the interstate right here to downtown because there's stoplights, because there's traffic. So just because you're looking at, you know, it's not that far to the interstate, that traffic in Ankeny can be a bear sometimes. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is if you're buying in this kind of quadrant over here, even even more um, interesting is the, the drive time from there because you have few straight shots to the interstate. There's not an access to I-80 I on, although it looks like there is, there's not. If you're living in this area, come some new builds are happening right here. If you're living here, you have to drive all the way over here in order to get onto the interstate or you're driving over here down to State Street and getting on the inter interstate there and the interstate, then you have to go back over to 235 and go down in order to get to downtown. So I'm um, kind of pointing out a lot of the, the downsides, which obviously if you're going to buy somewhere close to the interstate, I don't have to go over this. You know that your commute's not going to be too bad, but if you're going to be buying kind of over here or even um, up here in your, um, it's getting more and more new development up in this Northwest Ankeny area, your drive to get to, 35 interstate is where your time is going to be spent. 
a lot of time is going to be spent. So if you can, if you're living up here, maybe you're working in Hinckley or you're just ready for a 35 to 40 minute commute downtown. And if you're going to West Des Moines, that's going to be even further. So you still have to get to this interstate or you can cross here. But then again, it takes you a while to get down to the interstate. So that pretty much wraps up my kind of virtual map tour of the city of Des Moines. Obviously, I left a lot of things out, a lot of parks, a lot of rec, a lot of restaurant areas. And what I try to do is just point out the big things that you're probably trying to pay attention to if you're thinking about moving to Des Moines. And if you are, let us, let me be your boots on the ground. Um, I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams. You can text that number below, email uh, me below, and I'll be your boots on the ground. We'll do a vir virtual tour. We can virtually see houses and virtually see neighborhoods. If you are looking to move into Des Moines, that's what this channel is about. That's what this video is about. That's why I've created this channel, because it is important that when you're moving to Des Moines, you know what areas of Des Moines you like and are going to want to hang out in, right? I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't care if you live in Ankeny, downtown in the East Village, or you live out in Urbandale. It does not matter to me. But what is important is that you understand when you're living in Urbandale, what is it going to feel like? What is it going to look like? What things do you need to think about as someone that's moving in? vice versa if you're living downtown what's the nightlife what's the family life where are you gonna where are you gonna hang out what grocery stores you're gonna go to that's the stuff that i cover on this channel so if any of that is important to you subscribe watch the rest of the videos that i have i'll leave them all around here and you can click and just learn a little bit about each suburb see what our opinions are on each suburb again my name is darson grantham with keller williams thank you and see you next time peace